All right, so it took a little bit longer than expected, but here's part two of the massive days of play sale happening right now on the PlayStation Store. Let me know in the comments below which of these you agree with and which ones you don't agree with. And thanks as always, because that's a Duran fan for putting this list together. Let's create Pottery VR doesn't play at all like you'd expect it to. There's no move support, and so everything you're doing revolves around head tracking. But it is strangely therapeutic, and there's a lot to unlock here as well. So yeah, while it won't be for everyone, it's honestly not that bad. The crazy thing about Mars Alive is that if you didn't know the game was a huge empty map with nothing to do, then you might actually be convinced, like I was, that it's all leading up to something. And it kept me pushing forward through the entire game to see what was around the next corner. And then when it ended and nothing ever happened, it was a huge letdown. One of the bigger disappointments of the last year was Interspace VR's follow-up to a fisherman's tale called Mask Maker. The core concept is just as brilliant as you'd expect from a team like this, having to create new masks in order to possess the people wearing them, allowing you access further and further into the dreamlike world. But the formula gets tiresome and somewhat tedious within the first hour, making the back half of the game less than enjoyable. It's a little amazing how divisive Marvel's VR adventure is. For six bucks, you essentially get a mid-tier N64 platformer with about six to eight hours of gameplay. It does have some truly terrible voice acting, but that didn't keep me from having fun with this one. Mind Labyrinth VR Dreams does sport some good-looking worlds to explore, but sadly there's nothing to do in them and nothing to discover. It's almost as if the team ran out of money mid-dev cycle before they were able to add any gameplay or NPCs and just said, hey, let's call it a meditation game. We can get away with that, right? I jumped back into Mortal Blitz recently and was shocked how well it holds up even years after launch. It's super repetitive and only about an hour or so long, but the harder difficulty modes will keep you coming back again and again. If you like Crisis Brigade, then you're likely to love Mortal Blitz. Nebulous is so forgettable that I had to go back and check out my own review of it to re And as it turns out, it's a boring puzzle game that seems like it was only jammed into VR to generate a few more sales from gamers desperate for something new to play at the time. I'll never understand the love that Ninja Legends gets. It's essentially a wave shooter, but with melee weapons, so you stand in one place and let ninjas run at you while you parry their attacks. In other words, you're the least stealthy ninja of all time. O-Shape takes the theme of a popular Japanese game show and turns it into a VR workout game. The music is typical royalty-free garbage, but it's actually a great workout to dodge obstacles and move your body to fit through the oncoming walls. As far as the DLC is concerned, which is also on sale, check out the game first and see if it's your thing. As a pretty big fan of the One Piece anime, I was excited to get into the world of Grand Cruise, but it's hard to recommend. The minigames are boring, the interactions with other characters are just a drag, and it's over before you know it. I'm not really sure why this exists at all. Paper Dolls VR might have one of the worst control schemes of all time. Using the moves, you click the left trigger to take a step forward with your left foot, and then you click the right trigger, yeah, to take a step forward with your right foot. It's slow and tedious, but somehow I get over it and discovered a six-hour horror adventure with some really creative puzzles. There is a DualShock 4 option, but it's pretty bad. So if you're thinking of getting this one, be warned. The controls will take quite a while to get used to. Oh good, a game about being a DJ who's trying to get a party started. But for some reason, you just end up dropping cubes onto a table, which is exactly as much fun as it sounds. A Purehead Arcade desperately needs a multiplayer mode where 10 people can hang out in the same arcade because as is, it's pretty lonely in here. That aside, there's a ton of fun games to play, and the prizes you can win are almost as much fun as the games themselves. More recently known for Winds and Leaves, developer Trey Boucher's first game might be better than their second. In Prison Boss VR, you're stuck in jail, but by collecting resources, soon you'll be able to craft 11 different items to help you survive and build a reputation. But, you know, just don't let the guards see you with all that contraband. I like this one, but there's a free demo, so check that out first and see if it's for you. Puzzling Places was a huge surprise for me. I didn't expect to care at all about putting together 3D jigsaw puzzles in VR, but I did. Throwing on the headset and sitting down to put together a 400-piece puzzle is incredibly relaxing, and it doesn't hurt that the sound design here is on point, and everything looks super crisp. For anyone curious, there's a simple formula for making VR YouTubers despise what they do. In making them play Reborn A Samurai Awakens for review, it's a pretty good start. Even years after its release, Red Matter still manages to be one of the best adventure games we have on PSVR. Not only is it absolutely stunning on a technical and artistic level, but the VR interactions feel great, scanning everything that you come across is reminiscent of Metroid Prime, and the puzzles add a lot to the overall experience. 
It has been cheaper in other sales, but make sure you pick this up at some point or another if you haven't already. After a stunning CGI intro, Ionia drops you into a worse than Quest 1 looking environment with horrible controls, clumsy interactions, and drawn out conversations with NPCs. There's one or two good puzzles here, but the rest is completely inexcusable. Folks over at Alchemy Labs got brought in to make a job simulator style game with a Rick and Morty skin. At launch, it was overpriced and terrible, but with the current sale and the patch that addressed some of the control problems, it's now less overpriced and less horrible. Rick and Morty fans will get a kick out of it though. Riggs blew me away at launch with its throw caution to the wind jumping while running in full locomotion, not to mention the detailed graphics. But the sport itself never grabbed me, so every time I jump back into this one, I lose interest after about 20 minutes or so. A Sirento for less than $15 is a great deal, considering it usually retails for close to $40. But price aside, no other game gives you the freedom of movement or range of weapons that Sirento does. Being able to jump, double jump, wall run, do a backflip, all while firing handguns in slow motion bullet time, and then swap out your gun for a sword and do a downward slash as you hit the ground? Yeah, that's what Sirento's all about. I grew up loving Sam and Max Hit the Road, so it sucks that Sam and Max This Time It's Virtual doesn't really deliver what fans like me are looking for. Some of the minigames are fun and the humor generally works, but the sloppy design and overall low quality kept me from having much fun here. Shadow Legend is the game that we coined the phrase VRAF for, and it's true. Shadow Legend lets you climb, shimmy across ropes, feed horses, and has the most interactive shops we've ever visited in any game ever. The only thing to keep in mind is that the combat is a little flimsy, and the focus here is more on exploration and puzzle solving than anything else. Ah, total cash grab! Sniper Elite VR starts off with some really short, disconnected stages, and after the first 30 minutes, I kinda hated it. But soon enough, the levels get longer, more interesting, and when you play stealthily, the way the designers intended you to play, it really allows you to get into character. $15 is a pretty good price for this one. Look, I, I kind of love Star Bear Taxi, but in this sale, it's only a dollar off. So if you weren't interested at $5, I have a hard time believing you'd be interested at four. The Stifled is similar to Blind in the sense that you play as a blind person, relying on echolocation in order to see your surroundings. Uh, but the horror element is much better implemented here, and every enemy encounter gets pretty tense. That said, Stifled has been cheaper, frequently on sale for just $5. So if you haven't picked it up yet, you might as well wait for the next sale. For a lot of people, when Synth Riders came to PSVR, it dethroned Beat Saber as the king of VR rhythm games. The mapping was a bit more creative and offered some slightly different options in the music. The only real downside here is that we're somehow still waiting for the multiplayer update, which really is the best part of Synth Riders. And the longer we have to wait for it, the less inclined I am to believe that it's actually happening. Table of Tales is a true hidden gem on PSVR. It's a simplified tabletop RPG that uses dice, cards, turn-based combat, and has a great story that made the entire three-hour campaign really enjoyable. Trust me on this one, for 10 bucks, you can't go wrong. The American Dream is a rail shooter that pokes fun at America's obsession with firearms. The concept itself, I guess, is novel, but the humor just never landed for me. Not that comedy is really my thing. And there's way, way too much narrative here. If you're going to tell me a story, at least give me something to shoot while I'm staring at the wall. Under Pressure takes a much different approach to gaming than Angry Birds VR or Isle of Pigs did, playing more like Overcooked than anything else. One person plays in VR, and other players help out on the flat screen. With friends, it's awesome, but without friends, it's almost impossible. The Guy VR, which was previously known as Suicide Guy, throws you into a series of dreams where you have to find ways to kill yourself and wake yourself up from the dream. There's a lot of creativity here, but the performance is terrible, never hitting 60 FPS on any platform, PS4, Pro, or PS5. And the controls are kind of a mess too. It's too bad, this one could have been fun. The Room VR has some of the best escape rooms on PSVR, especially if you're like me and prefer a horror vibe over the humorous tone of I Expect You to Die. The only downsides here are the node-to-node -node teleportation and limited replayability, but for this price, those issues are easy to overlook. One of the lesser known PSVR wave shooters, the Walker oozes atmosphere like no other, and that's probably why I remember this one so favorably. Sadly, the gameplay is just okay, and it can't stand up to some of the better horror wave shooters like the Brookhaven Experiment. So make sure you play that one before even considering picking this up. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is always in our top 25 discussion whenever we get down to the best 2 or 3 PSVR games ever made. 
The VR interactions are great, scavenging the post-apocalyptic streets is even more fun than the campaign itself, and the progression system adds a ton of satisfaction while making your way through the game. It's a survival game, which means it's got a lot more going on under the hood than your typical zombie shooter. Atheseus desperately wants to be God of War, but in VR, the static camera angles and sluggish controls kept it from being much fun to play. That said, there are a few memorable moments here, so if you don't mind the super short 90 minute runtime, the $2 price tag, I don't know, might be worth it? There's something I really like about traffic jams. Maybe it's the simple gesture-based controls and how well they work, but whatever I liked about traffic jams didn't last terribly long. After a few levels, the novelty wore off and I got kind of bored. But if it does look like your kind of game, $5 is absolutely the right price here. If you've ever played the arcade classic Gauntlet and wondered what it would be like in VR, Trickster VR has your answer. The dungeons are randomly generated, there's a ton of weapons to unlock, and if you play in multiplayer, it's a lot of fun. The first Unearthing Mars is a hodgepodge of ideas, sort of unelegantly cobbled together into a game. For an early VR indie title, it probably got more hate than it deserved. Yeah, that includes my review. But that still doesn't make it any good. The sequel to Unearthing Mars took a radically different approach, sacrificing all of the adventure elements and making it into a full-fledged aim shooter. It's way better than the original, but the no-to-no -no teleportation and bosses that rely on quick-time events kind of killed some of the excitement I had for this one. It would have been easy to overlook VR Ping Pong's terrible graphics because the only thing that really matters in a table tennis game are the physics, and the physics here are total garbage, which makes the terrible graphics and lack of multiplayer way harder to swallow. When we first saw trailers for VR Ping Pong Pro, they advertised multiplayer game modes and sported some awesome environments making their first game look kind of silly by comparison. And those environments, although blurry, do make this version far more immersive. But somehow, the physics are even worse than before. Just by Racket Fury, it's kind of perfect. If you've ever wanted to be a giant city-destroying monster and star in your very own kaiju flick, well, sorry, this isn't it. Go play something else. This is terrible. Oh hey, if you didn't already know, V-Rock is total garbage. For $3, Waltz of the Wizard's Sandbox has some cool magic stuff to mess around with, so there's enough here to make you feel like you got your money's worth. That said, the developers over at Alden Dynamics stopped supporting this game on PSVR, meaning that there's been updates on other platforms that we'll never see here. The original Windlands was a launch game that really let us experience what full locomotion felt like in VR. You could run, jump, and grapple from surface to surface, exploring the worlds looking for artifacts. But without enemies or friends, Windlands got a little lonely, faster than expected. So with the sequel, developer SciTech Games added a story, NPCs, 4-player co-op, enemies, bows and arrows, bosses, and more, making Windlands 2 a lot more fun to play. I love this game, and if you've got three friends to play it with, I highly recommend it. Winds and Leaves has to be one of the stranger open-world games on PSVR. You wander around, picking fruit and planting seeds, trying to restore life to the planet, allowing you to travel further and further into the world. You eventually get new abilities that make traversal faster and more fun, but even that didn't keep the formula from getting old after just a few hours. I always struggle a bit when it comes to Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. The first time I played it, I was dumbfounded by how terrible it was. Sure, it had a bunch of Nazis to kill and some stunning environments, but the gameplay was boring and tedious. The next time I played it though, I really enjoyed some of the story elements where you sit in a chair and do very not first-person shooter stuff. If you really need to play this one, the sale price makes it worth checking out. But even then, I don't know. Mars is an update of the PS2 Classic Zone of the Enders, the second runner. It adds some cool 3D effects to the otherwise flat cutscenes, and a new in-mech first-person perspective to the action. And for just 7 or 8 bucks, the risk here is pretty low. It's just too bad Silent Hill 2 and 3 didn't get the same treatment. Okay, well that's it. More than 100 games on sale to keep you tied over until PSVR 2 gets here next year. Just don't forget, the sale ends on June 8th.